I'm Anne Ziada. I'm a chef at the Institute of Culinary Education, and today I'm gonna to show you how to open every nut. So here are some of the tools I'll be using today. I have a nutcracker that has curved edges. I have a more traditional nutcracker that you might have at home, straight on both sides. I have a garlic press that we'll use for some of our more delicate nuts. I have a paring knife, and for our tougher nuts, I have a hammer. English walnut. Like most nuts, it has a tough outer shell and the inside is the meat that we're gonna eat. Walnuts are known for their buttery flavor, they're a little bit bitter, and they're high in omega-3s, which are really great for your brain. This one's a little bit tough to crack, so we're gonna use our nutcracker. I'm gonna gently squeeze it till it cracks open, and I wanna use not too much pressure because I don't wanna destroy the nut. If I'm too tough, I'm gonna smash my nut into pieces. Pick away the outer shell with our hands, and that's our English walnut. So if you don't have a nutcracker, there's a few other things you can do using the paring knife. Go along the top seam of your walnut. If it's too tough, take the tip of your paring knife in and just give it a little twist and it'll pop right open. And another method you can do is using the nuts to crack each other. I'm gonna put them in my hand with their sides touching and their kind of stem ends facing away. And I'm gonna use them to crack each other there we go. That'll work as well if you are really at a loss for tools. And those are a few ways to open an English walnut. Black walnut. Much more bitter than the traditional English walnut. The shell is also a lot harder, so if I try to do it in my nutcracker, I can't do it. Maybe you can, but anything that's too tough, stop. We're gonna use our hammer. Whoop. And then from there, the black walnut has a stronger, bitter flavor to it. The English walnut is a little more mellow and mild. Make sure you take any of the little shells out of there because you do not want to bite on one of those. And that's our black walnut. Brazil nut. This is one of the toughest ones to crack, but we're gonna use our nutcracker. So I'm gonna line my Brazil nut in my nutcracker with the flatter side, basically this kind of like flat spine side. Give it a little smack. Again, I don't want to destroy it. I just wanna break the shell, not go through the entire nut. And this is our beautiful Brazil nut. It has a little bit of a skin on it. That's totally fine. You can peel it off if you'd like as well. I believe Brazil nuts are best eaten out of hand, straight up raw. I don't see a lot of recipes with them. They're such a treat to just enjoy right out of the shell. Yum. Another method maybe you can do, I don't think I have the muscle for it. You can take this flat side and take the sharp end of another one and use that as the blade to break it open. But this is only if you spend a lot of time at the gym and are very muscular -y. Nope, but that's why humans invented tools. American chestnut. Chestnuts are different than most nuts because they're higher in starch. When you buy them, if some are cracked, throw those away because the insides are probably rancid. If I were to roast this just as is, the water content would cause this to explode in the oven, which we don't want. So we're gonna score it first to allow some of the steam to escape as it's roasting. You can score it by cutting it across the equator of the nut, or you can take your herring knife here, just make a little X on the top. And you can absolutely roast these over an open fire like the song goes. And you can put a whole bunch on a sheet pan. You gotta go ahead and roast them for 35 minutes. Here are my roasted chestnuts. They look a little golden around the edges. They smell fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and open my roasted chestnut, taking the shell off, taking that papery skin off too. You can also boil the chestnuts to get the skin off. I like roasting because you're gonna get a much stronger flavor with the high heat. It has that almost like sweet potato, caramelized-y, maple-y flavor. And that's our American chestnut. Hard shell pecan or maybe known as a hard shell pecan or pecan, however you say it, all good. You can't get it wrong because there's nothing not to love about a pecan. We're gonna start by snipping off the ends with some strong kitchen shears. And then I'm gonna use pliers to just gently crack around the shell, moving it in a circle. That way I don't destroy the nut inside. I did kind of break it in half. From here, you can take the meat out. Sometimes you'll get little bits stuck in the grooves here. So just make sure you go ahead and check and take those out because uh, those are gonna hurt. They're not gonna taste good. Pecans are most loved for pecan pie, which is probably the most decadent dessert that exists because it's just a slice of rich, buttery goodness and sugar. I think I had a slice of pecan pie a few months ago and I still feel kind of full from it, but it was so good, it was so worth it. And that's our hard shell pecan. Paper shell pecan. It has a softer shell, as the name suggests. If they're soft enough, you can use your hand 
to crack them open by pressing along the seam that runs lengthwise. It's not a task for people who have long nails, so. Do this before you get your manicure. And then I can pick off my halves right there. So this is technically called a pecan halve, although we kind of think of this as like a hole when we see it in the bag. This tastes much more like a light caramel flavor to it. If it's too tough to use your hands for, you can also use the side of your knife, similar to how you would smash garlic. Use my wrist, give it a little crack and pop it out from there. So those are two different types of pecans, but there are over 500 types in existence. And that's our soft shell pecan. Almond. So the almond has a bit more of a neutral flavor to it, so you can use it in a lot of different recipes. So they can take on other flavors really well. So for this, I'm going to use a nutcracker. I'm gonna add it to the smaller portion of the nutcracker here. Gonna go around until it breaks open. If you don't have a nutcracker at home, it just needs some sort of force. So you can even put it in your door uh, between the hinge and the door and then slam the door shut and that will crack your nut as well. Almonds are a member of the rose family. You can absolutely eat the skins, but you can blanch them to get the skins off, which means you just boil them in water for about five minutes if you want more of a, a lighter color. So you can use almonds for making your own nut milk at home. All you need is a high powered blender, about a cup of almonds and add about four cups of water. Blend it until it's totally smooth. You can actually do that with any nut. Almonds are great because they have the most neutral flavor, but you can use walnuts. I've even seen like black sesame seed milk. Any nut will work. Okay, this is kind of fun. And those are our almonds. Macadamia. So it's a tropical nut, really, really rich and buttery, and it has one of the tougher shells. So we're gonna have to use the hammer. Give him a little nest so he has a comfortable last few moments of his life. <laughs> a stunt double right here. Perfect. I'll separate the meat out. And the meat is actually the technical term. You can call it meat, even though it is totally vegetarian. And that's how you open a macadamia. Dwarf chestnut. Again, we want the same deal. We want to roast it before we shell it. I'm gonna go ahead and score them in a nice X shape. So I'm gonna put them all on my roasting pan and I'm gonna go ahead and bake them for about 20 minutes. Okay, and here they are. They've let them cool for a little bit so they're not too hot to handle. Peel away the shell. What a gorgeous color on them. You can see you got a little golden, nice and fluffy. Mmm, just tastes like buttered popcorn, marshmallow, sweet potato, all together. And that's how you open and bake a dwarf chestnut. Hazelnut. We think of hazelnuts a lot with desserts because they have that wonderful nutty aroma and they pair so well with chocolate. The shell is a little bit softer sometimes, so we're gonna try it with a garlic press and try to keep that shape intact. It's beautiful. The skin part of the hazelnut is very bitter, so the best way to get the skin off is to roast it for about 12 minutes in a 350 oven, and then let it cool for one minute, covered in a towel so it steams. And then from there, you can use the towel to rub the skins off. The bitter skins will fall and you'll have a nice toasted hazelnut to enjoy. And that's how you crack a hazelnut. Acorn. Yes, an acorn that fell from an oak tree. Uh, which is a nut and totally edible by humans as well as squirrels. It's got a very tough shell, so we're gonna use the hammer. You might have noticed that squirrels don't use hammers, but they cheat by burying the nuts in dirt, and then when they come back months later, it's softer, so they can crack it open with their teeth. Um, I'm not gonna bury my nut in dirt. I'm gonna just do it the more civilized way of smashing it. This one, is moldy. About 50% of your acorns will probably not use, but the other 50% we can. Acorns are high in tannins, which give it a really bitter flavor. Tannins are acids that taste bitter. Tannins are also present in things like tea and wine and coffee. After we get the meat out of the shell, and I'm going to put it in water, we're gonna boil our acorns for 30 minutes. Here are my acorns. The water is nice and browned. That means I've got all the tannins out into the liquid and I'm gonna go ahead and strain them. You can go ahead and roast them and then you can garnish them in salads. You can make acorn soup. These are shelled, boiled acorns. Peanut. Despite the name, he is actually not a nut. 
He is a legume, which means that its seeds are together in a pod. So to crack them open, you can usually just use your hands to squeeze it. The shell is really papery and light, and you'll have your two peanuts inside of it. And from here, you can take the skin off as well if you desire. So this is a raw peanut. Peanuts are edible right out of the pod, but if you put them in the oven, you're gonna get more of that peanut flavor. And you can absolutely make your own peanut butter at home. After roasting your nuts, let them cool completely, and then you're gonna blend them up in a food processor for about 10 minutes or so, because you want to blend it long enough for the oil to start to separate out. That's when you've got a delicious nut butter. So you can make your own almond nut butter. You can take this in a lot of directions. Cola nut. It grows in West Africa and it has a very bitter flavor, but after we roast it, it'll get sweeter and it'll taste maybe a bit more like nutmeg. Also contains a little bit of caffeine and has been used to flavor soda. It has a little bit of a fragile shell. You can use your hands to smash it. I'm gonna use a knife. Get that papery skin off. And just rub it off. And that's our cola nut. Soft shell almond. There's a lot of different types of almonds. These, you can usually use your hands to peel off of the soft shell varieties. You can kind of twist it gently and out comes this lovely, long, beautiful almond. These particular soft shell almonds were grown in Afghanistan. So they're longer than our normal almonds that we see at the supermarket here. And they're a bit harder and crunchier as well. Just don't mind me. Gonna be here for a while. Hilly nut. This one grows usually in the Philippines and it's used a lot for candies and brittles. It has a bit of a mild light flavor to it, similar to a pine nut or a sunflower seed. So these come with a very hard shell on them. And in that case, you'll wanna take either a knife or a meat cleaver to score it around its waist. And then from there, you can smack it and crack it in half. These are already shells, so they have a thin skin on them. You can take that off by just gently rubbing it with your fingers. You can see it's very buttery and juicy in the center. And that's our pilly nut. Ginkgo nut. The ginkgo has a beautiful white shell and a lovely green inside. It's used in Chinese cooking and has a little bit of a cheesy aroma to it. And to get the shell off, we're going to boil it for about 30 minutes until it slides right out. That's the fastest way to get the shell off. So these have been boiling for about 30 minutes and I also let them cool just so they're not too hot to work with. I'm gonna strain them out. So if you're able to squeeze them out by hand, you can do that. If they're a little bit tougher, I'm gonna go ahead and get my chef's knife again. The thin white shell comes off and inside we have this lovely kind of yellowy green fruit. And it feels squishier too, also cause it's been boiled. Also believed to be an aphrodisiac. And that's our ginkgo. California pistachio. Usually when you buy it, the shell will be mostly open already. So for this, you can just use your hands to crack them open. And I would advise not using your nail. You can just use the pads of your fingers to break them open. That way you don't ruin your nails. One of the reasons I love nuts is because you get to have some involvement in the eating and the cooking process. So it's a bit more playful. You can rub the skins off if you like, but I don't mind them. If you find a pistachio with a smaller opening that's harder to get with your fingers, you can go ahead and use a free shell and wedge it in between, and that will help break it open, and then you can do the rest with your hands. Pistachios are great for desserts. If your recipe calls for pistachios, I would try to buy them shelled already. Otherwise, you'll spend a lot of time shelling for your recipe but you can use them in baklava, you can use them in cookies, and they add a wonderful green color. And that's our California pistachio. Turkish pistachio. It's in the same family as the California pistachio, but it's a little bit smaller and skinnier, as you can see, darker in color as well. And it's gonna have a stronger, more pronounced pistachio flavor. And we're gonna open the same way that we did with our California buddy. Yeah, it just tastes like someone took a pistachio and turned the volume up. The skin here has a little bit of a purpley amber color. These feel a little bit tough. In general, if something has a tough skin, you can roast it or you can boil it and it will come off. Such a vibrant yellowy green color, looks super fresh. And that's our Turkish pistachio. Pine nut. It is the seed of a pine tree and it does live in a pine cone. There's about 20 or so that are edible or big enough to harvest and eat. Most pine cones are too small to care about. We wanna crack the shell. I'm gonna use my garlic press. Pine nuts are usually used traditionally in the base for pesto 
but you can actually use different nuts in pesto as well. You can use walnuts, pecans, but pine nuts give it such a lovely buttery flavor. You can see there's a light skin on it. You can always peel that off. They're very fragile. Now you can see why they're so expensive. I'm gonna try the pliers just because I wanna see if I can do like light, light crack around as I rotate it, like we did for the pecans. I wanna get one that's intact. Nope. So I'm gonna use kitchen shears for the pine nuts. So these kitchen shears have a spot here that says herb stripper, and it has these two little holes. That's for us to slide maybe thyme or rosemary through it and release the leaves from the stem. I'm gonna go ahead and slide my pine nuts into that round part there to open up my pine nut. Oh, there we go. The scissors worked. Slide them out. And these are my pine nuts. Young coconut. It's technically not a nut, but nuts in the name, so we're gonna go for it. Tie my hair back. The inside of a young coconut has some water in it, and then the surrounding is gonna be a softer flesh. So to crack this one open, I want a flat surface to work with. That way nothing is rolling around. I'm gonna use a towel just to help stabilize everything. We're gonna open up the top, almost like a pumpkin, right? If you've carved a jack-o'-lantern, you have this top part off and you put a candle inside. I'm gonna use the heel of this cleaver to cut around the top. I wanna have my left hand out of the picture, right? Safe behind my back. Take it out, rotate it. All right, felt some juice pop out. I can use a paring knife, just going in, getting a nice clean, a little bit deeper cut now. You can see the coconut water starting to drip out until I get that center square out. There we go. Now I can pour off my coconut water. Enjoy a lovely refreshing beverage. Yum. So now that I've got all the coconut water out, I wanna break it open and scoop out the flesh. Let's try going down. I'm gonna cut it into quarters. I'm gonna break it into more manageable sizes. And then from here, I wanna cut the skin away. This one is browning pretty quickly. It's just starting to oxidize, meaning all the antioxidants present in it are starting to react with the air. So you wanna keep it in water until you use it for it to stay fresh. And that's my coconut meat. And that's how you open a young coconut. Cheers. Yum. Mature coconut. To crack them open, we're gonna use our cleaver, and for one last time, the hammer. I'm gonna start by stabilizing my coconut. It'll be a little damp. And I'm identifying these three eyes at the top, and I'm gonna find one that's the softest of the three, and I'm gonna break that one open and get that out so I can drain off my liquid. If you have a strong paring knife, or you can even use a nail and then hammer that in, just anything to get a little drain for us to pour the liquid off. You could also use a giant rock and smash it caveman style. One more thwack should do it. So now that I've got a hole, now I can go ahead with my paring knife, just clean it out, and I can pour off the water. And now to get the meat out, we're gonna use the hammer around its equator. There we go. And we want to separate out the white meat. There we go. So I want to take the hard shell off the meat, and then I want to use my knife, cut it into smaller pieces that fit my paring knife. And just be careful anytime you have a paring knife going toward your hand, and that's the coconut meat. So you can use coconut meat to make coconut milk. You can blend it up, and it's also a great snack just on its own. You'll want to store it in water to keep it from browning, and then uh, consume it within a few days because it is fresh. Mmm, this is better than like any coconut macaron I've ever had, any pina colada, just fresh from the coconut. I feel like I'm on vacation. And that's how you open a mature coconut. Nuts are such a delicious, nutritious food to eat every day. They are a great source of fiber and protein, minerals, they're a great addition to your diet. Whether it's snacking on them throughout the day or adding them to your salads, to your chocolate chip cookies, there's so many things you can do with them. Hopefully you can use some of these methods in the kitchen going forward. Until then, happy cracking.